Warrior Cats has done another Warrior Cats. It's kind of funny at this point, because I said this was going to happen eight months ago. Roll the clip. But there's one more piece of this puzzle. Great Dale. Effectively, the night cloud of One Star's Forbidden Romance Story. She is One Star's apprentice who later became One Star's mate. This in itself is already going to make the fandom want to execute One Star, but add in the Smoke romance, which undoubtedly overlaps in some capacity, as Whitetail becoming pregnant and Smoke becoming pregnant both happen in the forest territory. Shattered Sky tells us One Star rejected Darktail and Smoke because Clan Light is so harsh and he didn't want them to face it. But what if that's all excuses and he just doesn't want poor baby Darktail to find out he was cheating on his mom? Ugh. I think I already hate One Star seven months before the book even releases. I'd say chances are this love triangle will be the video I immediately make after reading the final book, and chances are it will not be a happy one. Yeah. So as promised, the first video I make about this new super edition that I hate will be on the One Star Love Triangle. Both Whitetail and Smoke are written in ways that are rather awful, in the sense that they're taking these female characters that are in love with One Star, and making the fact that they are in love with One Star their entire character. Like, I don't need to say this to you all, but apparently the Warrior Cats team needs to hear it. Female characters are supposed to be more than just girlfriends for the male characters. They are supposed to have unique personality traits, they are supposed to have ambitions that are separate from a love life, and they're supposed to be treated as way more complicated than they are treated in this book. Both of these two cats have a whole list of issues with the way they're portrayed, and I will talk about each one, starting with Whitetail. There are many deeply concerning issues with how Whitetail is written in this book, but I should start with the elephant in the room, this paragraph. This was leaked a couple weeks before the book released, and everyone was furious. One Whisker and Whitetail having an age gap in their relationship was one thing, but for them to specifically point it out in such a creepy way, like he was taking advantage of the fact that she looked up to him growing up, is very concerning. Especially with the context of him being her mentor in the past. And especially how they make the, oh I didn't think of this until now, very unconvincing. The fact that these two are even together is a retcon in itself put into existence by a website family tree, so if they really wanted to run this romance by, they really should have just retconned her being his apprentice, and deleted this whole paragraph, and this one as well. However, the whole situation isn't quite as bad as it could have been, thanks to time skips. The first time Whitetail appears in this book, she is already a full-grown warrior, so we didn't have any creepiness outside of the paragraphs I wanted deleted. But still, very yucky. Bad decision all around. And that's just one of the problems with Whitetail's writing. The next issue we have is the complete objectification of her character, both by One Star and in the writing itself. From start to finish, the book never really treats her as One Star's partner or as a cat of her own. She is always One Star's possession. He swaps away from smoke to full devotion to Whitetail so quickly the moment he realizes she's an option, as if he found a new toy, or a nice jingly thing as the kitty pets in this book describe them. There's a conversation with his father where they talk about Whitetail as a selection for one star, and praise that she's Wing Clan. Whitetail doesn't speak in this scene despite being there, and it reads like she was one star's pet or something. It's a demeaning situation, and the book never calls attention to that. And then there's the whole him hiding his relationship with Smoke away from Whitetail. Unlike the previous scene, this one is very much supposed to be something selfish to One Star, but not at all for the reasons that are actually concerning. The books treat him hiding Smoke as him just trying to hide his crazy ex. Him being scared that Whitetail would think he is cheating on him even though he broke up with her. And it is ultimately forgiven by Whitetail because they technically weren't dating at the time. But like, Cheating was not the issue here in the slightest. The issue was that one star did horrible, unforgivable things to Smoke that proves he doesn't deserve love in any form. He used her up and threw her and their kit in the trash. And that's why one star hiding Smoke should be concerning. Not because of the cheating, that didn't happen, but because it would key Whitetail in on the fact that one star might just do the same to her should he find a more convenient option for a mate. But this line of thinking is never addressed, and One Star just treats Whitetail the same way he did to Smoke anyway. It is obscenely creepy the way he thinks about Whitetail. His only thoughts after his own father's death all relate to Whitetail. He rejects his firstborn son on the basis of Whitetail. He rationalizes that Whitetail finding out about Smoke 
would hurt White Tail so irreparably badly as if she has nothing going on in her life other than her relationship with One Star, and he thinks he has no friends in his clan and only truly cares for White Tail. And there's even a point where he assigned a guard to White Tail, even though she was a full warrior and not a queen nor an elder at the time. And when the threat of Dark Tail is looming, he goes completely reckless in order to squeeze everything he can out of White Tail before she inevitably has to find out about Dark Tail. And he admits this. He's not even sorry. And because of this selfishness, so many cats die. Cats in Shadow Clan because he wouldn't share Lungwort. Cats in River Clan because he retreated from a critical battle. And then when he finally tells her the truth, which by the way is in front of the whole clan, he doesn't have the decency to tell her in private first. She forgives him in the next chapter! Like it's one thing to make a character treat their partner badly because they are flawed and you're trying to teach the reader a lesson, but in order to do that, you need actual consequences for One Star's actions. A consequence like Whitetail breaking up with him. But no, she reaffirms love for him. The book glosses over the atrocities committed against Smoke, and Whitetail is expecting more kits. Like yeah, One Star died and that was a price to pay. But Star Clan isn't that bad in the context of Warriors. He is confirmed to be with Whitetail again someday. Now let's talk Smoke. It's no secret in the book that One Star treats her terribly. He exaggerates his warrior life to win her affection. He relishes her affection and takes advantage of it at every opportunity he can. He keeps it a secret, leaving his family or claimmates to worry when he's gone for long periods of time. And when she does have his kits, he has already moved on to Whitetail and refuses to deal with any of the consequences of his actions. He refuses to even talk to her for more than a moment, which in one case leads to her being all on her own when she has to grieve the fact that two of her kits died in birth. Two kits that might have been saved had he taken her to a medicine cat. And One Star hardly shows sympathy for this fact and continues to drive her away. And when she continues to plead for her life in Wind Clan, he again shoves her away using the death of one of their friends to scare her, when deep down the only thing he's thinking of is Whitetail. He promises to return to Smoke to help her with Dark Kit, but he waits so long that when he does return, Smoke has long since died, and Dark Tail is fully grown and off living a life of crime. And whenever he thinks about Smoke and Little Dark Kit during his journey or at the Lake Territory, it's never that he misses them or wishes he could be with them, it is either relief that he doesn't have to deal with them anymore, or worry that some cat knows his secret, or just forgetting entirely. He does feel regret occasionally, but always shoves that doubt away, and he has so little self-awareness. As it is said, he took a long time to forgive Crowfeather for his forbidden romance. And when he actually does take the journey back to Two Leg Place, you know, long after Smoke died, he's all like, She'll never know I kept my promise, even though he very blatantly didn't. Then he admits to himself his reasons for liking Smoke were her physical appearance, her sweet scent, and her admiration of him. Because who needs kindness or character? One Star just wants pretty little dolls. As much as One Star says he feels bad about Smoke, it's all just fear over Darktail. Had it not been for Darktail, this evil living consequence of his treatment of Smoke, he would not have given her a second thought. In fact, he hardly does regardless, as abandoning Darktail becomes the core of what the book tries to tell us was his biggest mistake. And I'll echo what I said about Whitetail earlier. It's one thing to make One Star treat someone so badly because he is flawed and the book is trying to teach the reader a lesson, but the book instead takes all this awfulness, this clear abuse of a female character, and just doesn't punish him for it. They make this awful decision of Smoke appearing in One Star's dream to tell him to do the right thing and save the day. Smoke would never. One Star is so far beyond deserving any encouragement from her. I really want to assume this was just a regular dream and not an actual visit from her spirit. And then this book. This book has the audacity to make the message about not blaming yourself when the Darktail plot reaches its climax, saying that Darktail would have been evil regardless and that it wasn't his fault, 
Um, you don't get to play that card when you didn't even try. It doesn't matter whether or not he was evil regardless. It matters that One Star did not lift a single paw over the situation until Darktail was hunting him down. One Star did not earn the right to shift his blame on someone else. And then Tallstar says he's welcome in StarClan, because giving his life to kill Darktail was such brave atonement. But he never atoned for Smoke, whose life he ruined. He never atoned for Whitetail, who he lied to his whole life. And that's not even going into all the clan cats who died from Yellow Cough, or the battle One Star made Wind Clan retreat from, or his own clanmates he treated like garbage. Another video for that stuff. This video, I want the conclusion to be how poorly these two female characters were treated by the writing. Whitetail showed nothing but complete support for One Star her whole life, and can't even do so much as get mad at him when he blatantly abuses her trust. Smoke. One Star used her harder than any she-cat in this series has ever been used. But they brush aside this very serious plot point and make the message about the male character Darktail instead. It's just so wrong and quite frankly misogynistic that the book could have One Star be so awful to these she-cats and only really get a slap on the wrist for it. It is not an exaggeration when I say this is the worst Warrior Cats book ever written. And I haven't even talked about the book's other problems yet. That's a discussion for another video.